All right, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the economic calendar. Now, I know what you're thinking, okay? I know you're thinking, Roger, you're, you're, you're a technical trader, you're a swing trader. Why are you looking at the economic calendar? Why is it important? Why is it relevant? What difference does it make to your trading when you're trading for three or four days? What does the economic calendar have to do with anything? Well, that's how a beginner thinks. A professional trader doesn't look at the trees. He looks at the forest and the trees. You've got to look at the macro and the micro view, okay? The trading calendar or the economic calendar is very, very important. And I'll tell you why it's important. It's important because it tells us, all right, when volatility is expected and when it's not. So you can be careful. You can increase your positions. You can decrease your position. You can see when it's a good time to get into positions or get out of positions. But most of the time, it's just noise. So you have to know which report to look at and which report not to look at. Now, the best place to do is the best place to go, not the place, best place to do, but the best place to go is research.investors forward slash economic calendar. If you go to Google and you type in Econo Day, you'll come up with this calendar. Bookmark it, it's free, doesn't cost anything. It comes free with Investor's Business Daily, but you can pull it up free online. There's no cost. Now, here's what you need to focus on. Some of these events, this is, it, and it has the full week in advance. Notice some of them have red highlights, while some of them have green highlights. Here's another red one. Here's another red one. And here's a green one, all right? If it's green, it's less important than the red one. If it's red, that means it's very, very important. For example, what I just circled now, that's the GDP. That's the biggest quarterly report. Today's Thursday, the 25th. Yes, it is. And tomorrow's the 26th, and it comes out at 8.30 Eastern time. And that report is going to move the market after the market opens. It's gonna have a huge impact on the bond market and a smaller impact on the stock market. But nonetheless, that's the most important report of the quarter and it will cause volatility. So if you're, if you're thinking of entering positions, you may wanna wait till after the first hour to see how the market settles, or you may wanna wait, or you may wanna offset positions, or you may wanna just lower your exposure before the end of the day on Thursday in anticipation of the GDP. And again, not all of these reports are important. Like for example, this one doesn't even have a green star by it. Um, some have a green, some have red. My suggestion, is to focus on the red ones. Ignore the other ones, look at the red ones, and let me give you one other tip. If you click on each of these reports, it'll give you the expectation. These reports, to determine whether you're gonna have a lot of volatility or not, a lot of beginners or a lot of traders who don't know what they're doing, they look at the actual number. The actual number means zero, zero. The actual number is irrelevant. Nobody cares about the actual number. It's already priced into the market. What we care about is the difference between expectation and actual. The difference between them. If the difference between them is wide, then we can expect a lot of volatility. If the difference between what's expected and what comes out is small, you're gonna get very little volatility. So before you see the report come out, don't think of whether the report is gonna be good or bad because the expectations are already priced into the market two, three weeks, sometimes a month in advance. What you don't, what you do, what's not priced into this market is the difference between the expectations and the actual report. So for example, if the GDP is expected to be low, like let's say 2% and it comes out at 2.4, that's very positive, even though let's say 2.4 is a low number, if that's the expected range is two and it comes out at 2.4, it comes out better. So let's say expectations at two and it comes out at 2.4%, that's a bullish report. Let's say the expectations are at 2.4 and it comes out at two, that's a bearish report. So always look at the difference between expectations and actual. The bigger they are, the wider apart they are, bigger the volatility you can expect. The closer they are apart, the less volatility you can expect. These two factors that I'm talking about right now, these reports, 
and how to determine which ones are relevant, which ones are, can give you volatility. And lastly, to determine the volatility level based on the difference between the report, the actual, and based on the difference between what's expected and the actual. That's how you determine the degree of volatility. Hopefully that helps. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Subscribe to this channel. Talk soon.